Hello, this lecture is number 28 and it's about intermediate floors, so let's talk about that. So buildings with upper levels need to be designed in such a way so that the passage of sound from one level to the next is limited. Because we walk on floors and impact sound is quite important when we design on floors, we need to think about that. So this lecture is going to look at one method of designing a sound isolating floor. So this might be the type of floor you might use when you are designing between flats. This is taken from the example constructions document produced by the Scottish Government and it looks at a timber frame floor with engineered eye joists. So the first stage is to lay out our engineered eye joists, sometimes called composite eye joists, and we would have a depth to suit the span of the room, so a wider room would have a deeper eye joist, a narrower room would have a less deep eye joist. And this is the kind of thing we're talking about, so it's timber at the top or plywood at the top with a web of OSB. And on top of the joist, to act as an acoustic barrier, we would put a layer of plasterboard. Seems quite strange, but plasterboard is a nice dense material. Um, it's fireproof as well, so 12.5mm plasterboard laid over the top of them. It also allows us to support insulation, which we're going to put on top later on. Above that, we would have resilient acoustic battens, 55mm. And these are the sort of battens with a foam bottom to them. So they would run in the opposite direction. So I've shown a cross section here, but they actually run in the opposite direction from the joists on top of the plasterboard. So they're being supported on all the joists as they go across the room. That's the kind of thing there. It's a bit of timber and there are two layers of foam underneath. One is uh, very compressible, the other one less so, so that when you walk on the floor, that little bit of foam uh, allows the sound to be dampened. And in between that, we would have 40 millimetres of mineral wool to act as acoustic insulation. To the top, if it's going to have carpet or some other finish, we'd probably put 22 millimetre tongue and groove chipboard. If it's a bedroom, it's standard stuff. Uh, if it's a bathroom, you put moisture resistant stuff, which is which is green. If you're ever in a DIY store and you see this chipboardy stuff, the green stuff is the, the moisture resistant stuff. And it's got a tongue and a groove all the way around, so it's got a little bit that sticks out on one side and a little slot on the other. And when you put two of these things together, they, they kind of join together um, and add a little bit of support to each other. And then we can pretty much lay anything we like on top of that carpet or some other flooring finish. In between the joists at the bottom edge, we would have 100 millimeters of mineral wool acoustic insulation. And obviously we've got nothing to support that at the moment, so you'd, you'd kind of do that as you were building up the build up of the floor. And to the underside, we would have resilient battens, and these are fixed to the underside of the joists. So you can get a kind of hanger thing that's fixed to the, the bottom of the eye joist, and then these resilient battens would clip into that. And it just means that there's a very small point of connection between the floor joists themselves and these resilient battens. So there's not a lot of area for sound to transfer. And then to the underside, we would usually have a double layer of gypsum board. Uh, one layer would be fire resistant and the other would be standard plasterboard. So if we can compare that to a drawn detail, this is how you might show it uh, within, a, within a drawing. We've got carpet, chipboard, our mineral wool, and all our layers working downwards. And go back to the 3D drawing that we've got there. It's pretty much the same thing. So you can see all of those component parts making up this intermediate floor. And where a floor meets the, the envelope of the building, we have to think about how we deal with flanking sound. So we can see there around at the bottom of that uh, drawing there, we've got this little note that says acoustic sealant to be applied between ceiling and kit. And that basically means that where our ceiling comes in, we would have a bead of acoustic sealant. The important thing to note there is that the ceiling passes right out towards the kit before the internal linings of the wall are applied so that there's an easy to produce um, detail at the, the top there. The ceiling's likely to go on before the walls are going to go on because we're going to run services and that kind of stuff through that void. 
So in conclusion, a couple of key points to note. Acoustic battens with foam on the base will help reduce the transfer of impact sound. A layer of plasterboard under the acoustic battens helps to deaden the sound, but also supports the upper layer of insulation. The engineered timber joists provide a small sectional area, which reduces the transfer of sound when compared to solid timber joists. Those metal resilient battens to the underside allow the plasterboard to be fitted to the ceiling with a minimum of surface area contact. And the plasterboard to the ceiling needs two layers to ensure that the construction is fireproof and soundproof. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, please let me know.